the Tesla bombshell. CEO Elon Musk shakes up markets with one tweet yesterday saying this. I am considering taking Tesla private at $420 a share. Funding secured. Later in an email to employees, the Tesla head said no final decision had been made yet. But he did write this, quote, this proposal to go private would ultimately be finalized through a vote of our shareholders. If the process ends the way I expect it will, a private Tesla would ultimately be an enormous opportunity for all of us. Joining us right now is Stiefel Senior Automotive Analyst James Albertine and ARC Invest Analyst Tasha Keeney. Great to see you both. Thank you so much for joining us. Tasha, were you surprised by this announcement as, as much as the rest of us were? You know, we're not surprised to hear that Elon Musk is frustrated with the short-term nature of the public markets. And we've, we've seen him, you know, um, on earnings calls, get frustrated with questions that are uh, relatively short-term. So, you know, I think he's looking to the private markets because they'll support sort of a longer-term time well, horizon. Say, looking to the private markets is one thing. That's fine. But coming out with a tweet that he's considering taking this company private at 420 and the funding is secured, that's something altogether different. Did he break the law? You know, I, th I think um, we've seen in the past that if CEOs are to tweet something like this, as long as they provide the proper disclosure and sort of point investors about where to get more information, um, that I think it could be okay. So, you know, of course, there's a lot of speculation around this. We'll have to see how it plays out. I think um, looking at the price, 420, um, we think the stock is valued at much more. Um, you know, in the past, we've talked about autonomous driving. Um, if Tesla were to enable fully autonomous driving, we think the stock could go to 4000 in five years. Discount that to present. It's a $2,000 stock. Um, so, J James, what do you say about that? Do you think he broke the law? What do you, what's your reaction to this tweet yesterday? Yeah, first of all, good morning. Thanks for having me. And just one, I don't hate to do this, but one quick correction. It's Consumer Edge Research now. Stiefel's my, my prior employer. And that, I think, brings us to the point here. We're very focused on compliance and be very wary of legal issues. We don't know. Uh, as long as we think it was accurate to the degree that he can prove that there was, uh, if you will, security in the funding or email chain suggesting as much, uh, we think that sort of puts some of the concerns to rest. And, you know, this is uncharted territory, though, right? So Twitter, uh, you know, we've seen uh, high-profile issues with, uh, you know, Reed Hastings in the past and others. So uh, not sure this is a clear-cut case of, of a legal issue or fraud, uh, but certainly that's not our, our uh, expertise. Well, one of the biggest issues, I think, um, on the legal front is actually what's going to happen uh, when the short sellers come out and they say, what, what is the materiality of this tweet, right? Say some of them covered, and then there, there's issues surrounding that because he, he is actually coming out. Out with an official announcement saying that there's going to be a buyout offer. He's, he's disclosing new material. And where's the board on this? So could he actually lose his chairman title? Uh, you know, the board typically comes out with announcements and says, hey, listen, we're considering alternatives. We're considering this. We're considering mm. that. They make it out. They file right. an AK. There's a lot of But he had a whole plan, 420, and funding secured. I mean, well, so yeah. Well, and that goes back to <laughs> Elon Musk says this stock is worth a lot more, yet then he comes out and offers to buy it out at $420 a share. They're lose, they're, they're, the, the issue, this, I don't, I think there's less than a 20% chance this gets done. And one of the reasons why is it, it doesn't produce free cash flow. Mm. They're losing it's, money consistently. They need more financing. That's, so this not is only the kind of typically the kind of deal that you don't have well, a company going private. Like you wouldn't get. That's not the kind of company you want. Uh, who, you want you want a company that actually generates money and cash. They're burning who, cash. Well, right. financing secured on a company that is consistently losing money. Who's if you're if you're a bond share uh, bondholder? Yeah. You wouldn't invest in a company that can't pay you back. What do you say about that, Tasha? So obviously cash flow has, has been a concern for a while with Tesla. I think um, if you look at uh, private versus public markets in general, um, we look at Amazon, right? For a long time, um, analysts were, were on Amazon for not making any earnings. And they stayed public and they were rewarded. Yeah, but now they had cash the flow. That's, that's the biggest thing you're ha having here. And they're not only having cash flow problems, they're having production issues. Elon Musk said this weekend, sorry if I sound a little tired. I've been working like crazy in the body shop lately, showing that there's a fundamental under pinnings that are happening in the company that they're not able to meet. They're extending their uh, payments to accounts payable, which which sent the bonds down. And, and what, one thing, it, one worry for him, and it goes back to the funding secured, which you hit right on the top of the show. 
The company provided no detail on how the buyout would work or if the funding is indeed in place. So is this a false statement or not? That's what the rate, I guarantee you the, S the SEC, they were up last night at least looking into this. Yeah. And I'll point out another thing that the Hurt on the Street column in the Wall Street Journal notes, that Tesla, he might not like short sellers. Very often entrepreneurs like this get their trousers in a twist over short sellers right. and people who are naysayers about the company or just worried about the cash flow, the burn rate, and the amount of debt that they have, like any investor should, but they have benefited enormously from the public markets. Mm -hmm. This company has achieved a gigantic valuation, which has actually helped them raise money, help keep them operating through these tough times. They all, people always complain about, oh, the short-sightedness. Well, you know what? You know this before you actually take the company public. You did it because you benefited from it, and now you don't like people who are, are con legitimately concerned about the future. Yeah, that's of a business. good point. James, what do you say about that? And, and how would a private Tesla affect production and, and the creativity of these vehicles? Yeah, well, listen, I, th I think all the points I would agree with generally on both sides, on the bull and the bear side. I think the issue here is public markets work best when there's a great debate, but when you see capitulation. So when good data comes in and bears capitulate and say, well, you know what, we're going to uh, uh, call progress when we see it. Uh, but that doesn't happen here, right? And the same thing on the bull side. Even when there's negative data, people tend to spin it more positively. If the public markets aren't working to Tesla's benefit, if the negative carry of having to build a manufacturing facility, which takes years to uh, launch a mass market luxury automobile, which again takes more years, if that's not uh, you know, good for the public markets, then it's probably better suited for a, pri in, in a private market endeavor. So and is, that, there is are that what this is all about? This is, this, he just doesn't like being a public company and short sellers answering, answering to analysts? You know, I, no. I think, again, we've seen him in the past get frustrated with the short-term nature, and, and we're long-term investors. We're looking for this long-term opportunity of autonomous electric driving um, that not a lot of analysts are focusing on. But I think that we're seeing positive signs. So last earnings call, Elon Musk featured the autopilot team on the call for the first time. We know that Tesla's focusing on autonomous. We're also seeing a lot of key milestones happening this year. So Waymo, Google's autonomous driving outfit, they're going to launch commercial service this year in Phoenix. I think once that happens, people have realized is, hey, this is here, you know, autonomous so, so would you tender your shares concerning the proposal he made? He said shareholders can tag along. So is that an investment strategy that you would go along with? You would trust him in the private markets as well? You know, I think when we, again, when we look at the price, 420, we think the stock is worth a lot more. And as so public equity yes. investors, as public equity investors, we prefer that the company stay public. Again, we think like Amazon, they could be rewarded. And we think that the numbers will pull through once autonomous driving happens. And that will help with the cash flow as well, because Would, these will have much better margins, these uh, ride hailing and, and just really quickly, this is a consumer company. This is an automobile company, We're, regardless of how ultimately they're going to have to sell a lot of these cars to the public. It does benefit a company to stay public. It gets talked about a lot more, quite frankly, because it's publicly traded. We'll talk about the stock price. Here's what Tesla did today. It was up. It was down. Here's what Elon Musk tweeted or said on the conference call. It gets a lot more exposure if you're public. Than well, this private. is why they, issue, they, they finance our company by issuing secondary shares in the public markets. And we know for a fact that probably by October, they need to actually raise more money. So when he says uh, financing security, he's probably actually talking about that. He's actually secured the financing for the next leg of growth. Mm -hmm. And wow. let's not forget SpaceX. <laughs> I think that has a lot to do with what uh, he's looking at in regards to how he's running True. and operating. Uh, because Tesla SpaceX right is now. private. For SpaceX is private and he doesn't have the pushback. Uh, and I think, you know, long term plans for him would be to do something between those two companies. But di didn't he say yesterday he, does, he doesn't want to merge them? Of course he did, yeah. but he also put out a tweet at 420, yeah. <laughs> a 420 on a price <laughs> target, too, on, on Twitter. So I don't, I don't believe what he has to say. All right, we'll leave it there.